attention will be drawn to the management, hygiene, health and safety for the facility from entry, from the end, actually from the gate. We do this from the gate. When we were at Sheraton Hotel, we began from the gate. Yes, from the gate, how are people enter, how are they accessing your, your facility? Then at the checkpoint, at the enter, at the, how are they observing the social distance even when they are at the exception? Then the stairs, yes, all this we we we, we, we are this inspection. I know Bradford and the team will be able to do this. It's part of the quality assurance. We are positive that the facilities are implementing these standards, and hence Uganda will see a steady recovery of the tourism sector. I thank you. Steven Kangave, I'm the director of food and beverages at Golden Tulip. So how has this place been affected by the pandemic? Like any other hotel in the world, uh, COVID has really affected us, but uh, we have been a little bit lucky that uh, we already exercised the standard operating procedures. Uh, so when our guests came, uh, they realized that when they are here, they are safe. Uh, they can comfortable. That's why we have some guests who are sleeping over, and those who come to dine, and the, and the few conferences. We are located on Kafu Road. Uh, most people, know, uh, when you talk of Golden Tulip, where okay, talk of Fairway Hotel. We are opposite Fairway, adjacent to the towers, and uh, the nearby uh, other building is DFCU Bank. As the hotels are resuming work, we are going to be talking to some of the people that head the hotel owners' organizations that we know how are they going to implement the standard operating procedures in the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, hello. Hello, how are you? Okay. Are the viewers would like to know your names and maybe what you do in the Hotel Owners Association? My name is Jean Biamgisha and I'm the CEO of the Uganda Hotel Owners Association. So I'm in charge of all the day-to-day -day running uh, of the Secretariat. Our Secretariat is the umbrella body for all the hotels. Why would uh, hotels have a body that brings them together? What is it for and how can uh, other hotels that may be an part of it uh, enjoy it? And what do they need to join it? Okay, uh, like in any situation, there is always strength in numbers. So for you to be able to be heard, you need to speak as one voice, whether you're a big five-star hotel or you're a one-star hotel. The problems that we have, the challenges that we have are similar and they are cross-cutting. So it's against that background that this association was created 20 years ago. And right now we have over 520 member hotels spread across the country, right from the big five-star hotels right down to the one-star and even the ungraded hotels. So anybody who offers accommodation and has more than 10 rooms is welcome to join our association. The benefits are many. We get to speak as one voice even if something is affecting the industry. So for instance right now one of the things we are really championing is a stimulus package for the hotels. Our chairperson Mrs. Susan Mohwezi has held numerous meetings with the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Tourism to make sure that the hotels in Uganda can have a stimulus package to help them, especially during the COVID period. As we try to open the airports and work, why don't we encourage our people to eat out, to spend a weekend in these hotels because they are empty, and you see that the prices are not the same like the international prices. That's a fact. I know that that's a fact. Before Serena closed, I know what they were charging. But still you find that people are not going there. Take your families, take your children, take your wives, take your fiancé to these hotels and have a good weekend there. Go to the lodges. People in Uganda don't like traveling outside. Those that are in Kampala want to stay in Kampala. Those that are in Gulu want to stay in Gulu. It's a good time. That's what promotion of domestic tourism is all about. 
enjoy. Uganda is one of the most beautiful countries. The other day, I uh, seen a video, I think it was by UTV, of Chaninga. It looks so beautiful, you know? You see some places and you're like, is this my country? You know, many, many of us, when you travel outside, you want to visit everywhere. But how many of us have visited our own countries, our own country, our own districts? So I, we appeal to you, especially the media, promote Uganda. Promote Uganda. It's a beautiful country. Promote it. And then, what, that's the promotion of domestic tourism, and that's how you get your prices down. Any hotel that has above 10 rooms, any person who offers accommodation, even if you have your own house and you have more than 10 rooms and you want it to act as a hotel, you're very welcome to join us. Okay, so what are those standard operating procedures for, for the hotels uh, in Uganda now? So, of course, now with the COVID period and once they opened up the hotels, we could not operate as we have been operating. You know, hotels, they have... We, we thrive on having a lot of people in the hotels. So the new normal, our new normal is now we look at minimum number of people coming into the hotels. We look at minimum contact that you have with your, with the hotel staff. So for instance, now with the new standard operating procedures, we've had to reduce uh, the number of seating within the restaurants. If you'll notice today, the restaurants that are usually full, people close to each other, on a table that sits 10, we were only seated four people. You will also notice that many of our staff have masks and they have gloves because they are uh, dealing with many staff, they are dealing with many guests they don't know who's infected or not priority now is on protecting the people and this, the hotel staff uh, you'll also notice that the social distancing one of the, in the lifts you could enter as many people as you wanted right now it's a maximum of three people there is a hand sanitizer within the lift so before you even press any of the buttons you have to use hand sanitizer so it's a completely different way of operating for us uh, cognizant of the curfew at seven many, most of our business especially is at night outside of conferences etc so even as we are operating even as we are open it's still at a very low capacity compared to before uh, ladies and gentlemen, my, my name is Chiwanda Gonifresuri. I'm the Minister of State for Tourism, Wildlife and Activities. I bring you greetings from Honorable Tom Mutime, the Minister of Tourism, Wildlife and Activities. Uh, Mama Chia Lady of Uganda Hotel Owners Association. My brother, the Deputy CEO of Uganda Tourism Board. My brother, Bradford. The team from UTB. I can see you very well dressed up today, as usual, and uh, in a promotional way. Uh, the CEO of the Uganda Hotel Owners Association, Jean. Jean is really, uh, when you hear about her, you can see her. <laughs> when you hear Jean, Jean, everyone talks about you, 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 you. You may come here in the room and you may fail even to recognize her. <laughs> but she's a very big lady in her actions. So I want to just recognize her, let her stand up. Just for recognition, I want to talk about her just briefly about the time when we had COVID, when we were beginning to, to get people from out of the country. And we were stuck as a country. We had no way to kill the people. Every hotel was not accepting. First of all, the fear was still too much. I called, I, I had called Jean and said, now what do we do? We invited her the Minister of Health and said, look, we shall manage. No, I will not rest until I tell this the president that this is the lady actually who made the quarantine successful in the hotels. Otherwise, if it wasn't her input to talk the hotels, of course with the with the, uh, the loading of the chair lady, would it be the book? I know when we were going through that very hard time with Samola here, with Vivian, and the Minister of Health. I want to thank hotel, uh, hotels that accepted us, and thank you for convincing them. And that's why we, uh, when we hear about the success on COVID-19, it's actually been, um, everyone has participated. Just imagine if all oh, hotels had said no. We had no way to put these people. We had not organized the schools. And uh, if everyone had gone home, we would have more infections. Definitely, if you had allowed anyone to go home, probably to see 
to have um, self-quarantine, it was going to be very difficult because even those whom we allowed, we were not disciplined enough to keep it that way at the self-quarantine. Very few Ghanaians that actually can keep their discipline. You go home and sleep in your room alone, and you leave the rest of the family in the other rooms. The next day, you find people have come to greet you because you come from Saudi Arabia, and actually they are, they are already in parties. But now, because we were able to have these people hosted in our hotels, we were able to identify them, and we couldn't have infections of infection. That's why we, we took long to move to the second level of infections, because we were able to quarantine these people in the hotels. So I want to thank you. I want to thank the Ghana Hotel Association, uh, Owners Association, and the staff, the media fraternity, thank you for always being there for tourism. Tourism without media is not tourism. The minister earlier on talked about you as being one of the people that pioneered uh, making quarantine hotels possible. Uh, what are some of these hotels that were chosen as quarantine centers and why them in particular? Okay, uh, like the minister said in the beginning, there was a lot of misinformation and very little information at the very beginning. So coronavirus was really intimidating and really scary. So when it came to, when the government needed quarantine centers and hotel, I mean, and the hospitals didn't have the capacity, they looked at hotels. But people in hotels were very scared. Number one, the stigma. Will people ever come back to my hotel if they realize that sick people were in this hotel? Exactly. So that was the biggest, biggest challenge. Number two, there was no budget. Many of the people who are coming back said we don't have money. Hotels need money even to just, not for profit, but to just be able to host these people. They have to pay for electricity. People are showering every day. People are flushing toilets every day. Quarantining is very expensive. While if you, when you go to a hotel as a guest, you have activities during the course of the day. So you get up go, do whatever you want, come back in the evening, sleep, get up, leave. But as a quarantine guest, you're in the room the entire time. You're flushing the toilet every hour. You are watching TV every day, every hour. That is electricity, that is water. You're hungry every minute. Being bored makes you eat a lot. And all that the hotel needed to be able to have to take care of the guests. So the hotels needed payment government didn't have the budget, returning guests said we don't have the money, so it was very expensive for the hotels to quarantine and that is why we got a lot of pushback from many of the hotels. Who is going to cover this bill? Guests are saying we can't, government is saying we can't, yet we are spending, you know, yet we are going to suffer with the, with the stigma afterwards. People are saying I'm never going to sleep in that hotel because it had sick people. But Fortunately enough, we had people who were champions, hotel owners who were champions, who say, this is our country, we need to be able to give back in one way or another. And they started opening up their hotels and we were able to quarantine. So this time around, it was easier because even by opening up a hotel, your staff are not doctors, they don't know what to do. So the Ministry of Health had to come in, inspect the hotel, disinfect the hotel, and even train the staff. Because if you a hotel is a quarantine center, staff cannot go home and come back because they will infect their people. So even the hotel staff who work on you are quarantined within the hotel. All that is an expense which people have not been able to appreciate. So that, that that's why this time it's easier because now the new hotel, the hotels which were chosen to act as quarantine centers for the returning Ugandans are hotels who have done this before. They already know the system, they already know the process, they already know what to do, they have already been equipped with the PPEs, so they are ready. Other than getting new hotels where you have to retrain, where you have to do everything afresh, which we did in the beginning. Then are these hotels going to go back into business like the rest uh, since now we are opening up? Absolutely. So one of the things we realize with coronavirus is how to be able to pre prevent ourselves from catching it, how to be able to prevent our guests from catching it, and most importantly, how to be able to ready the hotel to be able to host new guests who come in. So for instance, you see when we were walking around today, they say that if a hotel has been occupied 
they cannot sell the same room until after 72 hours. And during that time, it's disinfected. All the bed sheets are disinfected. The entire room is completely disinfected and made sure that it's safe for the next guest. We've also learned, of course, that the coronavirus does not survive for more than a number of hours on flat surfaces. And after 72 hours, I think that is enough period for the coronavirus that has the residual virus on the tables and the cups and the glasses to have been taken out. So, yes, absolutely. And all hotels which have been used as quarantine centers, the Ministry of Health will disinfect the hotels completely after the quarantine period so that they make it safe for the next group of guests to be able to come in. So Ministry of Health has its own standards, the hotels have got their own standards and working together as a team we are able to make sure that the hotels are ready and clean and safe for our guests to come. Okay. In your perspective, uh, what is the future of uh, the hotel industry in Uganda? Um, right now, at least for the, this year, for the rest of this year, it still looks very, okay, it still looks a bit, it's going to be slow for this year, for the rest of this year, mainly because the, a lot of our market is interna the international market. The international market, it's going to take a while before we have confidence to travel in the same numbers and the ways that we were traveling before. But outside of that, I am very optimistic that the hotel industry is going to come back again because by next year people will be eager to travel you know people will be eager to change their routine so we are going to see a boom after the we have gotten out of this corona period i am also aware that it will take some time so at least to be realistic we do not see a lot a lot of business the way we had in 2019 uh, for the rest of this year. But that shouldn't worry or scare us because we are expecting to see a big boom of people traveling after we have gotten through this pandemic. Tourism in Uganda mainly depends on the international market. Now, since the airports have been closed and no one is supposed to flow into the country, it gives us a question to ponder on. How is tourism going to thrive in a situation like this when the Ugandans have a very low culture towards domestic tourism? Well, the Minister of Tourism in Uganda, Godfrey Chiwanda, might have an answer for this question. As uh, what I can say is that as cabinet, we know um, how much the, the tourism sector has been hit. And I uh, know, we also know the contribution of the sector in our economy in terms of employment, in terms of uh, providing the market for the products. So, really, the package that is, can be given to hotels or to the tourism sector can, is a, it, it can act actually as a, a multiplier effect positively for the whole economy. Yeah, because if hotels lay off all their workers, if they don't keep their facilities, even when they do the promotions after, do not be able to, because of what you got, as a, as a country does not have hotels, hotels do not give videos and work together. So, we are, not, we are working together with the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Tourism, we will to cabinet over this, and in time we shall invite you as the first to see which kind of package are we here done for the tourism sector and the hotel, uh, the hospitality industry in general, and also the hoteliers in particular. About domestic tourism, yes, we really need to promote the domestic tourism. We need it. We need it. And uh, it's very, very, very important. If actually we are to, 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 as I said before, that even before we talk about the region, even we talk about the continent, the international tourists, there must be packed. Yeah, but also you should also know that now the rooms actually are becoming even more expensive to manage now than before. Yeah, because if you see the, the amount of handling now, if a room, I mean a room and they, they reserve that room for 72 hours, 
It's like I have occupied that room for four days. I'm in a, a room here for one day, but kept for another 72 hours. With about three days, two days. Yeah? Three? Yes. So, so really, that makes the room even more expensive. But we, we shall sit more. We are still discussing between the two operator, UT actually, because the mother, uh, camp, um, association for all the, the, the private sector, but also UTB and the ministry. As we promote the domestic tourism, we are still developing a paper which is called Plamule Loaded. Under Plamule Loaded, we discover the power of Africa. It's a paper that we are developing. And uh, any time, like in two weeks' time, we are going to come out and launch our packages. Because, yes, we are going through this is expensive, but also we need to open up. You know, keeping the hotel empty, you rather have someone in that room, even when they not be able to, take, to pay the $450 or the $500 that you've been charging. But still, someone should be able to make it because you're using water, you're using electricity, sanitizing, and all this kind of thing. So, we are looking at all this, and we are doing this as Ugandans. We want to say we are, should move together, as I mentioned there, that the promotion that we do is actually going to help the whole country to recover. Well, that has been it for today's episode. Don't miss next Sunday as we talk to the officials in Uganda Tourism Board. Maybe they should let us know how is tourism going to thrive throughout the pandemic and maybe what are they doing to help the private sectors in the tourism industry. I've remained Namale Agnes every Sunday 7.30 p.m. here at Google Day TV. Don't miss Uganda Navy. Ciao, ciao. Uganda Navy Don't miss on Google Day TV Mubu Gwanju Babo Simazinga wa Africa Jo Sangi Kula En Sentono Sunga Tingaga Ukukamala Ebibira En Solo Sako Maybe Didrubia Mazi Okunga Kuota Dena Matiribo Na Genjuba Egoloba Abantu abali no mukwano eri bantu banabwe sagoho nabazira mbazira abazimbi ensi ya tu to super program Uganda Navy yibulirwa Sunday sawo mlechi tundu ezakaungeza wanakukugude TV nange na Mali Agnes